Welcome back to Uninformed Movie Reviews, Uninformed Movie Lovers. It is I, Danny Two Hands, here with Frank and David. Yo. It is our late July session, and we are talking about... <laughs> <laughs> Just what? to put it in the context of where we are in I'm the I'm tired of saying what episode number it is and getting it wrong. Is this 61 it's, it's or 60? It's 67. Dang. Did you name close? So I did it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. We're talking about Jordan Peele's latest in his trilogy now. Nope. I still hmm. hate the title name. I don't, I don't know if it's trilogy. Well, it's not like a trilogy. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he has three it's his movies. third work. Yeah. There we go. It's his... Well, it's not a trilogy. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, oh, okay. now that I'm saying it. <laughs> <laughs> it is one of his three movies, and it is in my opinion, his best movie. Whoa, coming yeah. in with the takes. Right in my the opinion, bat. the worst title, too. So hmm. so I actually learned something about the, the oh. title in the last couple of days. I was telling David I've just been like consuming interviews. I kind of wanted oh. to rewatch it, but I was so tired after work yesterday. I just went home and just started watching oh, interviews. I, I forgot about that. But it's a, it's actually like an acronym. Um, it's a not of planet Earth. Yes. Funny. I like that better. Yeah. Did not. That did not come through without further research mm -hmm. <laughs> one thing i'll say about nope and us uh get out not as much makes it very hard to like just search for it yeah all like, of them right now it, while while nope is hot no problem but in the future when we go to do the ranking yeah it's gonna be nope jordan peele or nope. like david movie. what's your favorite movie nope, nope. 2022 yeah yeah like it happened the other day in a text chat we were in where it's like someone just uh was like what movie should i go see <laughs> nope <laughs> <laughs> yeah it came across really funny <laughs> uh so cool i like that there's an acronym i kind of feel like it was an afterthought but we'll go ahead and say that um well, apparently they weren't trying to like let it out. Like they were just trying to keep it like yeah. a cast and crew it, yeah. secret. But um, God, I'm gonna forget the actress's name. What a jerk, Kiki. 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 Palmer. So uh, Kiki yeah, Palmer. she had a uh, a little uh, Tom Holland moment. Uh, ah. where she like let it slip out in one of the interviews. Oh. And Jordan Peele's like, well, I guess it's out. <laughs> um, and that was yeah. before it came out. Uh, no, I think I'm I'm pretty sure it was an after release. Ah, well then, yeah. I saw some pre's and I saw some afters. They're all a little little mushy in here yeah that makes sense yeah kiki palmer is this her first gig or is this no she no? was she was in um uh man i just saw it the other day well this isn't even her first project with jordan peele she actually had a small segment on uh key and peele heck yeah She's she been was acting uh, for like malia obama's okay. anger oh. translator oh, oh well, that's, that's good fun. Yeah. man i just read a thing and one of them was it the house bunny really what I don't remember no. her in the House Bunny, and I definitely was saw it that. the, the you know what? I'm fries getting, guy. I'm actually I'm getting this confused with I'm getting this confused in two ways. Oh, Okay, one is that I'm confusing the House Bunny with the movie Miss March. Ah, both. Uh, one the of Apple those Banger. movies, yeah, yeah, those good. But then also I'm confusing the tidbit trivia knowledge is that Anthony Jeselnik is in Miss March. That's weird. In like a cameo role. Strange. I was just reading that before I came over here. I just I wasn't. Don't remember him from that movie. I don't, either, be a yeah. weird but I don't like his face. Well, he's. I think he's like literally. He's just like a small, small cameo mm. role. He's probably like at the party or something. Yeah, he's, he's like, like Cannibal like, Corpse in Ace Ventura. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe even less so. Uh, so uh, she's been. She's had a few uh, film roles as uh, Alice in 2022's Alice. She was in Hustlers in Pimp. Yeah. And, and Lightyear, hmm. which uh, not a whole lot of people saw. Oh, you mean us. that super duper. Blockbuster movie Lightyear? Yeah, yeah. That everyone the, wanted? The one that broke box office records. Mm -hmm. Do you think that if it, they did Tim Allen as the voice, yes. that more people would have gone to see it? Yes. I might have gone. Lesbian kiss be damned either way, you know what I mean? <laughs> Is there I, a lesbian kiss in the new yeah, Lightyear? Yeah, you didn't hear about that controversy. Oh, no. People no. were like, don't take your kids to see it. They might see two women kissing. ChristianMovieReview.com. Dang. And then you watch the scene and it's like, hmm. it's like the most innocent wow like, whereas like thing. we're like a normal like a, a heteronormal disney movie is usually them just like tonguing it yeah you know exactly what I mean? <laughs> and let's not even get started on the rear ends what oh about what word. about sleeping beauty doesn't that guy just assault <laughs> that chick while she's asleep <laughs> Uh, to save her, Danny. <laughs> he yeah, assaulted yeah. He her knew, to save he her. He knew that was going to work. Yeah. <laughs> wow. He probably got a little startled. Like, oh my God, she's waking up. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get out of here. I thought I was going to get away with it. <laughs> Bolts. Oh, Ooh. Disney. Well, before we go into Nope, I mean, I, it, you're, you've clicked on this episode. It's probably just because you're a loyal fan and you have no idea what this movie is. You've been living under a rock and you're just like, man, uninformed movie reviews. They got a new review. I got to know what it is. Yeah, that's probably, how we get our clicks. That's probably not what it is. That is what it is. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, it's Jordan Peele uh, 
comedian turned director actor no actor turned director screen white screenwriter yeah he's screen white he's screen white um he's really this good. is his third <laughs> film and it's um i guess it's it is horror first comedy second i think it I flavors think of are. comedy yeah. yeah yeah um I mean, can you give us a brief synopsis? You're really good at those. Oh, oh, a synopsis on Nope. Well, n- Nope is should have said Nope. Oh, um, dang, missed opportunity. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know what? I had this. This is a weird episode because it's uh, there's no character limit extended since this is like the movie ah, we just yeah. did for Sealy. Mm-hmm. It and, is one big character limit extended. Yeah, it's the most exactly. extended. And um, in the CLE, I already kind of gave a, a synopsis. Oh, that's right, because you had the book report. I had the long one. Yeah. So, I mean, if you guys want to... Dang, good plug, too. You know, check out that episode, of course, for a quick, uh, concise... Yeah, you know what? It's real short. Just pause. Check it out. That's There's right. There's a synopsis. Yeah, that'll help you. But uh, I will just say, just, you know, basically, it's a uh, brother and sister who are kind of business partners to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. Um, they're working as part of like a stunt company that rents out horses for movies. And, you know, well, this is the podcast and we are just getting into spoilers and we've already kind of done light ones anyways, but yeah, we'll already put a spoiler alert right now. There is a UFO of some kind. Oh, if you didn't catch that from the trailer, uh, David, yeah. they're UAVs now. Yeah. UAVs. Sorry. No, no. UAV. UAP. UA, un- oh, unidentified yeah, aerial phenomenon. There we go. Phenomenon. Phenomenon. Man, too many acronyms. But anyway, <laughs> they're getting scooped up. Uh, the, their horses are getting scooped up by this UAP. And uh, basically, they become intrigued with the idea of catching it on camera for the fame. Because they're struggling in the business. They need to make it big, yeah. It's, uh, their dad was the one that established the business. Yes, right. their dad. And, and he's like a well, legend. They're, and now they're great, great. Grandfather. Well, yeah, yes. establish it, but ever since pictures the, moved, the one who's been keeping it going is the dad. Yeah, right. True. Um, we get some side characters introduced. We have like Stephen Yun, who runs like a fair carnival kind of thing. That was attraction. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, he's he's awesome. That's just like right down the road. They're like neighbors, I guess. It actually reminded me of that little like shanty town that they had next to the Grand Canyon in Las Vegas. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. just like that. Very similar vibes. Um. And then we have like the Fry's Electronics guy, and then we have uh, who's great, yeah, he's yeah. angel, a co- comedic relief role, really good. And then we have uh, the film director. Don't even remember his name. I don't remember his name either. Edgy guy, but yeah, he edgy reminded film me of someone. Uh, Danny, uh, David Duchovny would befriend in uh, California. California. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta be careful there. You, <laughs> you just Whoa, firing off. You're gonna get somebody. That's did I just have a negligent discharge? <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> did. You need better trigger discipline. Damn. <laughs> Let me see your license. Whoops. Wait, this is Texas. You it's don't a need that anymore. Carry state. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So in the end, they end up having a showdown with the alien because um, it turns out it's not. It's not a ship. It's a, it's a creature itself. Pretty cool. Um, it just looks like a flying saucer, at least what we interpret them as. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's that's more or less the plot of mm-hmm. Nope. It's pretty straightforward, I think. Yeah. Yeah. As far as the yeah. the plot yeah. goes. You, you do have, you do symbolism, have yeah. this part that we have to discuss plot wise of the uh, show, the television program that exists Dude. inside the universe of this movie. Yeah. What an interesting part of this. But before we dive into it. You know, uninformed movie lovers and those who are new, thank wow. you for keeping us going. It is viewers like you that keep the lights on around here. It's like PBS. <laughs> okay. Hey, weird cross plug. All right. uh, <laughs> uh, those of you who are listening on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, please help us out with a five star review. Please be sure to hit follow, and we will pop up in the new episodes category on your home screen whenever a new one's out, which is usually Sunday. If you're watching on YouTube, help us out with a like, share, and subscribe tell a friend tell your mom tell your grandma we'll be there hit us up on instagram at uninformed movie reviews let's get Mm. to the review should we start with first impressions wow can i just say that your timing on like hmm i feel like we need an ad here it's perfect oh man if only we had sponsors the pacing is so right (laughs) wow yeah i would pay money for that (laughs) Let me let me just put it that way. Is there anything you want to you want to advertise? We, yeah, yeah. we could use some sponsors. What, what product are you crazy about? Right? Okay, I, I just got to throw this out here. I mean, 
I always think it's so weird to be on a podcast and just start talking about another podcast. <laughs> but I've been listening to uh, Dispatches from Myrtle Beach. Oh, Link's dad. Yeah, thing. it's like Link and his dad from Good Mythical Morning. And okay. they have a podcast. And they don't have any sponsors yet, but Link's dad is just doing sponsorships for local businesses. <laughs> oh, that's Like nice. places that he just likes to go. What a dad he's thing like, to do. He's like, yeah, you want to you know, have a good time and have a few beers? And I have- love how he talks like this. <laughs> yeah, it's great. So we might just start doing that. We might just start... Yeah, what's your favorite local business right now? What's a local business you want to shout out, David? Oh, why you put me on the spot like that, man? Well, you just started the conversation. I guess that's true. I put myself in the scenario. You know what? I'll, I'll go Orange Cow this episode. Oh, I haven't had that's that good, yet. That's a delicious burger, man. Okay. That's good. I don't think it's a chain. Been meaning to be try good. that out? What about you? You know what? If we're going to restaurants, I'm going for Don Carbon. Ah. It is a family locally owned, and they just keep expanding. Great, great chicken. A great pronunciation, too. Don Carbon. I was trying really hard not to say cabron. <laughs> I do it every time in yeah. my head. When yeah. I pass by that place. Quesadilla. Hmm. Huh. I'm going to say Kinley's Coffee. I'm just kidding. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hit up at Kinley's Coffee for all your uh, video recording needs. Wow. Oh. If you are like in El Paso. El Paso and listening, I will talk about Quintero's Meat Market. Which Smart is, play. Which is mm. family owned and operated for the last almost 20 years now. Established by my dad and uncles. They've got the tastiest meat and the thickest fingies. Really good stuff. Be sure to check them out for quality USDA AAA rated meat. Wow. Okay. That's nice. Wow, guys, we had a plug. Yeah. It was weird. They I didn't even pay us. They didn't to one. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully they're listening. Anyways, let's get into <laughs> Nope. So my first impression, and it was really, I was able to vocalize it immediately after watching the movie because I actually ran into an ex-coworker and immediately were like, dude, what did you think? And I was like, my, the, my first initial reaction was dope. Like, I had so much fun watching this movie. I was scared. I laughed even more than I expected to laugh. And the fear was, like, really legit. Like, Mm -hmm. you could really Mm -hmm. feel, like, some tension in in a lot of parts of these movies. Mm -hmm. Loved it so much. Thought it was super refreshing. That it was, like, a very interesting take on the genre. Yes. What about you? Yeah, I gotta say, I I feel very similar. Very similar to Frank. I enjoyed... Especially the, uh, well, I mean, I enjoyed the whole movie, but but the end, the climax is, mm. is fantastic. Yeah, um, yeah I kind of like didn't want the climax to end yet. It's like, oh, no, give me more. I, you know, this started off in my idea as a joke just to hit you guys with, but like, like, you know, it's like, oh, it's signs, but they did it right this time. You know what I mean? It's like actually good. Oh, you mean the best movie ever made from M. Night Shyamalan? No, I mean, obviously not. But Shout out to our M. Night Shyamalan movie ranking. And just to be clear, it's not that I don't think Signs is a good movie. It's just not as good as Sixth Sense. But mm. we don't need to, we don't need to like, dig this up again. The archives would argue otherwise. Um, not, not on my personal <laughs> position. No, it would not argue. I, I've, I've remained consistent. Um, but in, in a weird way, it does feel a lot like Signs, not just because of the, like, desert... Or not desert, no, it's but a farmhouse farm. thing. Yeah. But more so, like, all these little characters who exist in this strange little community. Yeah. And there's a lot to them that's not really even said, mm-hmm. which is some of my favorite aspects of the movie. Um, I think it's it's got really good motivation with not a lot of time. Like, Jordan Peele's crafted... Uh, some very complex and interesting characters without necessarily spending a lot of time with them. Mm-hmm. It's just really good, like economy of time, considering like how much they're on screen and how much is being told to us, whether it's verbal or visual. It doesn't feel bloated because he's, he's not taking the time to deep dive into everyone's trauma. No, I mean, cause the, the, the pace is, is very consistent yeah. and steady. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that like character development came from collaborative efforts with like the actors and mm. Jordan Peele, like so much so to like Jordan Peele had to rewrite pretty much the entire script uh, when they when Brandon Perea um, uh, did his read for his uh, audition. Is that um, Angel, yeah, okay. Angel. Um, he didn't know anything about the movie. He just knew it was a Jordan Peele project. They just gave him some like dialogue to read. He prepared a character. Um, they kind of wanted him to be like a happy go lucky, like ready to help, like comic relief. But mm. he thought like this guy's a retail employee. I've never seen a retail employee like like that. So he was yeah. like not one that's been working yeah. there for that long. Not one that's been there long <laughs> enough. Yeah, that boy, I'll tell you what. Um uh. so he came in and he did the read like like he hated his life being there, you know what I mean? And Jordan Peele like called him up. He's like, Hey, I kind of need like to, for you to do these lines again or if not I'm gonna have to like rewrite the whole script and then he kind of paused and he's like 
no, you know what? <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> he that's just a, like liked great. it so much. That's smart. It's but smart. yeah, they were, you could tell in these interviews, like uh, it was a very collaborative effort and all these people really enjoyed working on this project together. Yeah. It seems like they had a lot of fun. Yeah. I feel the same way. I liked that they, you can, this movie doesn't insult the, the uh, audience's intelligence, which is something you said. And I totally agree because insulting it would be you know having to literally spell out why everyone is why they're how they are in this small cast you know what i mean we don't need an explanation on why the cinematographer is gruff and and um you know what's the word irreverent about anything you mm. know what i mean uh and we don't need more about why angel hates his job i just thought it was funny that he happens to work at fries which is pretty much extinct and anyone that lives outside of california doesn't really know like have you mm. been to a fries they don't they've never had a fries here. i've never been to a fries yeah i've been to one in arizona okay i think they had them in arizona um it is uh, so, so you've been inside one yeah and it's it the one that i used to live by was so weird because it is an electronic store but everything's so sparse and spread out mm. and this particular fries i'm guessing this was just one whack off one whack off shoot there we go it's like there's a re- it's one of those moments where you have to really <laughs> pronounce what you're saying anyways yeah. um she sometimes you just gotta stop and, and sit on a little bit <laughs> yes you did do. you just say, <laughs> did you say what i think you said <laughs> yeah, anyways did. this this fries had a oh, wait, hold up hold up, hold up. <laughs> i'm not done with the moment i'm, not, I'm not just joking okay. this fries Sorry. had a checkered floor and it had a section. It was mostly Alice in Wonderland, Wonderland themed. What is going on right now? I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, that's exactly the impression you get when you walk into the store, though, okay. because it's like, this is an electronic store. Why is there Alice in Wonderland themed stuff like all over the place? I'm talking, there were like uh, decks of cards, the card men, and like the the queen lady, and the Cheshire cat is like. Okay, are you sure you're not having like a lucid nightmare or something? Yeah, that anyone. Is really this is weird. weird dude. This is legit. I will find pictures of this for you. Um, it was weird and i don't know if that was every fries but the two that i walked into that was the situation where they just had a theme at each fries that did not suit why being at fries would even be the, why you'd be there interesting yeah okay and beyond just theme i'm not talking like painted on the walls like a mexican kindergarten Whoa. place so yeah they, you're talking you're still looking at it, right so they just do themes man yeah. i'm seeing like an aztec temple yeah I'm seeing this like, is all like styrofoam oh, cutouts, like thing. different fries. I'm talking there's, memes. A, there's a UFO fries. I'm talking movie sets. Like they're they're huge. Hmm. It's, this is really weird. It's weird. It's like a That's Best cool. Buy that just doesn't worry about the products it's selling. So did fries have a theme in the movie? I don't remember that. No, I don't think they showed the inside much of it. I think because fries is pretty much it's on its last limb. Um, when I was there. Anyways, that is a huge tangent to be on. But now you know what Fry's is like on the inside. So when he said it was like Fry's, I was like, oh, cool. Let's see the inside. I wonder if it's the UFO one. Um, either way, I digress. Um, yes, Frank, I feel like this is a very fresh take on the UFO genre, on the alien genre. But it also instilled like a new fear or it hit on like uh, fears that were previously there for oh. me. And especially in my viewing experience, uh, <laughs> there was definitely a person two rows behind me that was not accustomed to watching uh, horror films because any small thing that would happen, they'd be like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, there were some really good moments of terror in here. I got the same feeling watching this that I did watching Fire in the Sky. I don't know if you've ever Ooh, seen Fire in the Fire Sky. Fire in the Sky is dope. Yeah. yeah. Fire in the Sky is not the greatest movie, but, man, as far as, like, alien movies it's kind of like up there with like things like the fourth kind it's like definitely like a dark alien movie that takes it to the next level of like um the callousness that an alien species would have for like um, you know what really does it for me in fire in the sky is not even like the abduction but when they're sitting at the restaurant afterwards oh yeah and then just trying to figure out like what happened and what they're gonna do and he's yeah and he's telling he's like retelling everything Mm -hmm. oh my god it's so crazy but we we had an alien abduction and that's where we brought up episode i think well i think we were talking this i'm pretty sure was a we dap x episode we were talking Mm. about actual abductions and we did the abduction that That fire in the sky is based on yeah Yeah. oh yeah trevor or travis something like that yeah Yeah, travis scott i believe yeah (laughs) travis barker actually that's oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. he went to astroworld and then he came back yeah 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 yeah, yeah. (laughs) Uh, anyway um yeah this is particularly the case when again spoiler warning when um jupiter and his family 
are doing the show and they get sucked up into the thing and you can like see that it is digesting them. And it reminds me a lot of like the scenes from fire in the sky when he's like in like the protoplasm kind of thing that he's Mm -hmm. in and they're like cutting him out of that thing and just bleeding him. And it's just really crazy, man. It kind of made me think of the souls in Freddy Krueger's body, like trying to escape. Oh yeah. That they're all just kind of jammed in there and you hear the screams and the yells. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that scene like at night where, uh, where the I guess Jean Jacket's above the the house and he's just like spewing out the blood and, and well like, Jean Jacket being the 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 name that they give the alien right mm-hmm. which is usually called just whole man or whole thing I don't want to misgender whole, it. whole disc whole disc <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that 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 is definitely a huge uh, moment when they reveal that it's not a machine but mm. some kind of creature it looks like a stingray in the sky <laughs> yeah it does look yeah. very stingray esque. Yeah, that's what it made me think of for sure. Until like towards the end of the movie when it starts like transforming into different shapes and into stuff. Into an angel. Yeah, it's really crazy. Very Evangelion-esque for those Evangelion fans in there when it tries to transform. Well, and we were talking a little bit about it. Um, I think Frank was bringing it up that, you know, it's just a biblical angel depiction. Yeah. yeah. Like the Ezekiel's wheel kind of thing. Which is kind of just a fun little like, oh, hey, maybe the Bible's aliens. It's like a fun little, you know, inference such a cool design yeah. such a cool design it was just like oh my god this is like a series of fabrics or something it just made like me think of those again. um like wind powered like wooden sculptures uh that that are like art collective made have you ever mm. seen those those huge oh, yeah, like wind yeah. powered they almost look like they giant creatures yeah. but they like move and walk around uh, yeah yeah, yeah just yeah. like powered by the Whew. breeze it's creepy it's very creepy and something that's done so well visually as well in the daytime as it is in pure darkness. And then yeah. they have, they use the moonlight so perfectly to like give you a sense of if you've ever been to the Southwest or you ever lived in the Southwest, like, you know, those quiet full moon nights where you can like yeah. see everything all around you. And you're just like, Oh, this is creepy. <laughs> Here a pack of coyotes off in the distance. Yep. You yeah. know, in the, in, in the review I wrote, I, I made a reference to jaws or the, equating mm. it to jaws, mm-hmm. but this part is actually very jaws because for the most, for most of the movie, it's in darkness that mm-hmm. the creature comes out, but the final like battle, I guess, when they're trying to get on camera and then ultimately end up trying to kill it, I guess. But, uh, that's all played in the daytime. Yeah. In a similar way, like how Jaws is too. Right. Completely underwater and unseen until like the until final the act, end, basically. When it's revealed and then then you just see a whole bunch of it. Apparently, uh, those dark scenes, the reason that they look so good is because they use some technology that hasn't been used before to like shoot at actual night and get that like richness in there. Wow. Um, and I couldn't find the name of this or anything. Jordan mm-hmm. Peele, just in a couple of interviews, he's like, yeah, I mean, we've never done it before. And he kept correcting himself. He's like, well, it's never been done before. Yeah. Um, with one of the directors of photography, they figured something out. Interesting. Yeah. Super unique, beautiful cinematography in this movie. I mean. But even cooler point, like we'll probably see more of that. There's going to be dope night scenes coming in the future. You know what yeah. I mean? We'll yeah, that cool is cool stuff. It seems very innovative. And I mean, it has a lasting impression. Like this movie has some great imagery that you can like to think about anytime anyone mentions it to you. You're like, oh yeah, I can. it's like I'm watching the movie. I've seen it. It's funny that you mentioned that because there were some scenes where it was so bright at night that I was like, are they doing a day for night thing? How are they pulling this off? Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. Yeah, they were going for the feel of like being in complete darkness, but your eyes have already adjusted to the darkness. Yeah. Really loved that it didn't rely purely on <laughs> um like purely on shock sequences too. It's really uh it's really good tension building, especially when you're just like looking once they point out that the creature can camouflage as like one singular cloud. You're kind of scanning the skies more than the characters are at some points and you're just like if he just happens to be one of those scenes where like the creature just like like silently is moving across the sky you're just like Dude. i mean that's creepy to me i was like that's really weird <laughs> just yeah. jump in between cloud to cloud you know and you know what they do have some just straight up jump scare gross out moments though too mm. yeah so it's a little bit of both and i guess that kind of keeps the um uh, it keeps you on your toes. You're not really knowing what to come next. We we got the fake jump scare with the little yeah, kids dressed up perfect. as aliens. That's so one of my good. favorite because the tension's so yeah. good. And then you get like th- two or three good scares out of it before they reveal the joke. Yeah. That is a classic John Carpenter moment, I think, mm. where he's kind of giving you like a red herring, but it ends up turning out to be like something very benign. You know what I mean? Oh, interesting. Okay. For John Carpenter, I can't really... You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of like a... 
Paranormal Activity, you know how all those movies, especially once they had the camera, they go through the sexual harassment joke or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, or no, no, well, not no, sexual. No, he sex wants tape. to make a sex, yeah. sex tape. tape joke, really. The one that's in every movie. Some some girls are more harassed than others. Uh, <laughs> Fair. Throughout the, throughout the titles. Fair point. But then there's always someone plays a prank on somebody. Yeah. In every movie. It reminds me a lot of that. Don't they do this in Signs, too? No, I might be mistaken. Well, they're the, the, no, the, they, the Who Brothers? Who's they, they, they think it's they a prank. They think it's a prank. Yeah. But it yeah. is. It's recon. They think it's the the boys. The something boys. like the, it's the opposite of red. It's a blue herring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a blue herring. A Lionel Pritchett. <laughs> um, Lionel Pritchett and the Something Brothers. Yeah. 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 yeah something remember. like that. Mm-hmm. Um. I think as far as like in comparison to his other works, he, this is a good departure. This is because it was almost as if he was kind of making too much of a formula in a way. I know that hmm. Us is very unique too, but what I mean is like as far as the advertising goes, I like from something I noticed, there's no noticeable soundtrack for this movie. There's no noticeable like song tying into the theme of this movie really. Um, yeah, we didn't get some popular hip hop song like reworked. redone to be right. like That's spooky. only the f- that's only us, though, isn't it? They're isn't it also in Get, get out? out? No, they do it in Get Out. That's where we got. I got five. No, that's, that's us. us. But oh I yeah, think, I think I there might be one in Get Out too. Well, you know, we, after he did it in Us, a few other movies did it too. So like yeah. Candyman did yeah. it. Oh, that's right. But that was produced by him too. Uh, yeah, that's true. So it's not really. But that's yeah. kind of like the feel, and you, I, I, I appreciate that he tried to break that mold. And yeah. there's no real. I mean, the soundtrack is really good. As far as like a composed soundtrack yeah. when it comes well, the in. Score, yeah, the yeah. score's good. Score's really good. Um, you know, I think all three of them feel very different, not just in like plot, but also in degree of I don't know, literalism. It's kind of weird. Like Get Out is a very literal story. Oh yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas us gets into like a very allegorical kind of feel. Super. This one is still allegorical, I think. But this movie also has a bit of like, uh, well, it's science fiction, obviously. It's the most science fiction one. But it's also got a little bit of an adventure feel to it, like an adventure yeah. movie. I could see that. Very Spielberg-esque. Yes. Kinda. It's got a little yeah. bit of that kind of energy to it. Uh, that's that's where I think the Close Encounters kind of feel comes yeah, into it in some moments. Where you're trying to, where there's like a collective group of people trying to work to figure out what this thing is. Mm, you so, know what I mean? Since we're bringing up uh, Close Encounters, uh, again, me, to me, go me, back me, to me. Brandon Perea, he was saying he was given a, a list of films, even before he had a script. He was just, Jordan Peele gave him a list of films to watch to prepare. And those films were uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, obviously, Jaws, No mm. Country for Old Men, Tight, 2001 A Space Odyssey, also and great. Alien. Mm. Yeah, okay. I could see that. Yeah. Man, um, I don't know when's the last time you guys watched Close Encounters, but you know, I remember before I did this recent rewatch, I remember it being like really cool, whimsical almost, and not that scary. It's pretty scary. <laughs> like, I haven't seen it in a long time, but I do remember there being moments of that movie that were pretty freaky. Yeah. This, I also haven't unknown. seen it in a while, but I have played with a Simon Says fairly recently, so it's got to oh, count for something. That's close. Yeah. That's really close, I yeah, think. Yeah, it plays on the fear of the unknown really well. Um, I gotta ask, did you guys catch the Goonies reference in this movie? Uh, yeah. Um, is it the part where they where she goes to take the picture in the well and then they fall down and she's like, "It's our time down here." <laughs> no, I, I like how you gotta you gotta quote that twice and not that many episodes. Yeah. Uh, no, I've always got the Goonies right at the surface. No, there's a moment where they're like in a restaurant. They're in like a fish a fish restaurant, like a Long John Silver's, and when they're leaving, the sign outside of the restaurant says. Cobblepot's Cove. Huh. Oh, no, I didn't and see it. And I was it. like, man, this has to be Goonies. It's got to be. Man, good old got, Chester Copperpot. He's got Copperpot. Sorry, oh, I, said wrong, I said the wrong I said the wrong. weird last name. It's a $50 bill. <laughs> that is the <laughs> second reference to an 80s movie <laughs> that he's made in a... Or, like, because he did the set of The Lost Boys on the Us Pier or something like that. Or there's something true. F- from the set of The Lost Boys yeah. on there. He, he loves to add in a lot of uh, references... I mean, in us, there's also some, some uh, shining uh, shots. Dope. Yeah, it's re- it's really interesting. Um, you know, I was actually because Danny, you're saying this is your favorite one thus far. Yeah. What's your favorite one, Frank? If you if you had to pick one now, that's a good question because I feel like there's some recency bias having me lead yeah. to us. You know what I mean? Uh, or having me lead to nope. Nope. I feel like on my initial watch. 
Get Out hit me a little harder than Us did. Interesting. Yeah, I think the so too. the like the the psychological aspects of it like really fucked with me a little bit. Like yeah. the the not having control of your consciousness to the point where you are like imprisoned inside your own consciousness. Pretty like, metal. That's yeah. That's, that's pretty, pretty crazy. Pretty man. metal man. Although I'm sorry, didn't you check? No, you good. The intro to Us is terrifying well <laughs> it's uh i just think it's funny because i would say us is probably my favorite so mm. we, we all we all have we're all we, we got all the bases that's here. like not even frustrating that's delightful yeah. <laughs> yeah it makes it would make ranking these hard but I we'll think get, you said five right what's that five is the minimum for ranking yeah i think yeah. that you need yeah. five you know i just remember that you suggested a number and i was like yeah that's the right number it just seems right it needs to be like on yeah know? that way there's a mid mm-hmm mm. Top and two mid two range, mid. exactly. Mm, That's nice. So, what to get into next about this movie, guys? Can, what can we talk about, Gordy? Gord, I need to talk about Gordy. Oh. I can't wait any longer. Wait, which one's Gordy? Gordy's the ape, isn't oh, it? Oh, okay, okay, oh. yeah. Gordy's house or whatever. Is uh, what is right? it? What is it called again? Welcome to Gordy's house. Welcome to Gordy's is house. That something like that. It's everyone like loves an Gordy. 80s sitcom or something. Everybody like loves that, Gordy. Right? Let's find out. Yeah, what an interesting thing to intertwine into this whole thing, you know? Yes. Yeah, and I, the intro. Is so, <laughs> like, to to get into it, I guess there's a Gordy's home. Gordy's home. That's it. This is how the movie kicks off, right? I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken. No, you're right. Yeah, it's the intro scene, and and we see like uh, we hear more than anything. We hear and we see that there's like a, a live studio audience that's abandoned, and then we cut to like the sales pitch, I guess, um, from from the brother brother sister. We cut to something totally different, and the you, oh, we're oh, saying eighties, oh. eighties TV show probably? for Gordy. Yeah, yeah, it has yeah. to be. Yeah, I it seems so. like eighties. Yeah. This is right. It's just got, judging from like the shirt that the actress is wearing and the mm-hmm. the colors of it. It had to be. It lived this it very just looks like a Full vibe House vibe. Yeah, yeah Full House thing. vibe. Yeah. That's a good one. Growing Pains or something. I don't know. Yeah. And uh, it's young Jupiter. I forgot his last name in the film, but his first name is Jupiter. I'm assuming. Oh, right? okay. Well, I mean, it's probably his stage name. I bet. Right. Maybe something. Like well, that. Well, it's Stephen Young's character. Right. And we find out that this is like his sort of backstory that he was on a television show that ha- starred a chimpanzee, right? I'm not getting that wrong. That is a chimpanzee or a bonobo. You, you are correct. It could be. Okay. Bonobo or chimpanzee. Well, it's not a monkey. It's an ape. You you yes. almost were yeah. there. You were almost were there. And yeah. You fudged the landing a little I'm bit. I'm sorry to a our great bit. ape yeah. fans. Um, This chimp. That's fair. This yeah. chimp. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's, he's an actor on this show, which I, okay, we got to get into immediately. There's no way that a multicam sitcom is is filmed with a live animal in every episode, right? That's kind of crazy. I mean, it probably has happened before. I don't think Maybe so. not the same animal, though. Yeah, but it would just take so much, I feel like. They even to had to use both of the twins on Full House, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. Those I, don't, I don't know if Mr. Ed was a filmed with a live audience. No, that's just not like a multicam nose no. filmed like a... Like maybe some sense, scenes are with you know the, I mean? yeah maybe, maybe some scenes had a live audience. Well, this plays a little Definitely bit of the track. story because this uh, chimp goes nuts uh, and like kills all the actors in this set. I'm Just sorry, goes ape, goes ape. Thank you. Here we go. And murders all this cast. Steve Yun survives this uh, ordeal, and when we meet his character in the future, and he's introducing this whole story, he's got this like secret room in his office. Yeah. That has this shrine to everything about the show. Mm -hmm. And he's talking about it kind of affectionately about like, you know, this fist bump. It was the first on air fist bump uh, was was the show that he was in. It was really going to take off until, you know, this thing happened. It was doing great in the ratings. And he's got all this collection of different little memorabilia from it and everything. And it's just so interesting to me because we find out from his character later, you know, that he's going to try to wrangle this alien as part of his production Mm -hmm. to like to have a live show where the audience gets to see an alien and it's ultimately going to cost him his life and his audience's life but right um that he would survive such a traumatic experience (laughs) with a with a with a animal like and the lesson there should have been you know, coming away that oh, we can't control these Don't animals. Mess with like, animals. But he doesn't know it's an animal. You know? uh, that's he true. Thinks it's he thinks ship. it's little he green keeps men. Referring to them yeah. as they, like oh, they're early. He is selling yes. like little novelties of like little aliens too. Like he yeah. thinks, yeah, little chimp like aliens. But it's it's great because mm. he's oh, I didn't yeah. catch that. Yeah. I didn't he, catch he's that. He's so fascinated by the moment hmm. that it that he's even remembering it 
in a different way. He's like dealing with trauma in a very yeah. interesting way. That's what I was. Yeah. Whereas a lot of this movie is about characters dealing with like an individual trauma from one thing or another. But it's it's such an interesting thing because Jordan Peele never comes close to saying any of this out loud. No. Right. Right. Yeah. Which is he lets you see it in the face. Yeah. Yeah. I like it, his character was super fascinating. Um. I guess Jupiter. I, mean, I think yeah, we'll sure is Ricky Jupe Park. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, we'll call him Jupe, I guess. I'm down. Um. Anyway, yeah, I like that he does have like an affinity for that time, and it seems like yes, it's like part of his business decision is having to live off of his fame from there to like capitalize on where he is now. Because mm-hmm. I feel like he probably didn't make it in Hollywood past that. You know what I mean? Um, he might have tried like farming a little bit and it didn't work out. Could, well, and, you know? and even child actors whose you know show doesn't have a catastrophe, uh, a lot of them that just ends up with what's just happened. doesn't it? You yeah. I mean? And then there's even a line like what in the moment you're saying where he shows like his memorabilia room and it's like closing and he's just like, yeah, I had a Dutch couple come in and pay me a lot of money to have sex in there once. <laughs> <laughs> that was um, good. But you can tell as he's like retelling it, he like has a fascination with it, but it's something that is like deep and dark inside of him because obviously mm-hmm. it's probably one of the most traumatic things ever. But it, this movie is also about capitalizing on trauma and capitalizing yeah. on fear and not facing your traumas. And we were talking about this earlier where it's like the literal monster or whatever it is, uh, Jean Jacket, the UAP, um, it it is something that will attack you if you stare at it. Or if you look at it. Even if you make eye contact. If you yeah. make eye contact with it, so it's, it's kind of like an explicit way of saying like don't like it's saying it so people are so scared to face their fears Mm -hmm. that it will eat them alive or something you know Mm -hmm. what i mean so real cool so it's definitely a huge like part of it uh direct from the director's mouth and i was telling david on the way here like i was so tired of hearing this word because he just hits it so hard in every interview to the point where the actors like hit it in their like solar interviews but Mm -hmm. his big thing was like our like hollywood and america's obsession with like spectacle like the way we're so obsessed with like commodifying spectacle and we need to see like spectacle and everything that's like the big thing he was like really trying to hit that makes sense yeah and now i was thinking about it too you know we were talking about character motivations and the beautiful use of not having to deep dive so hard into every one of them it doesn't really explain why oj is the way he is so very solemn and brooding um, but it's, it, it kind of like speculates that it's just from the loss of his dad. You know what I mean? It could be. I kind of took it as like the siblings are like each half of their father. You yeah. Know what I mean, the, He's uh, showman. Kiki's like the showman yeah. and she's like, and yeah, um, um, OJ's like the serious rancher. Yeah. Yeah. And I can see that. he's that's like, really nice. he's always like, there's things like things need getting done. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. we, there's always something that's gotta be done and we gotta do it. And again with like facing his personal trauma is like coming to terms with his dad being gone and having to like step up into the shoes of his dad i mm-hmm. think and i think that's his motivation of something he's kind of kind of fighting but not fighting at the same time like this i think he's having to create his own way to capitalize on it versus the way that his father was able to capitalize on things you know what i mean like with the whole capturing it on tape which is something I probably wouldn't think of doing. I'd probably be like, I need to get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, and sp- bail. <laughs> well, speaking of capturing on tape, we also have the director character who... Uh, All right, let's look up his name because I still can't remember it. I think it's like something with a C, like Cliff or... I thought Cliff. it was like Hugh Holst. Holst, okay. Antlers Holst. Hmm. Antlers Holst, interesting. Adlers? Antlers. Antlers? Antlers? Well, he we don't get his name a lot because honestly, he doesn't have a lot of dialogue. He's hmm. not really even in the movie for that long. He's in one of the earlier scenes, uh, second scene, I guess. Um, he's there when they get fired the, as horse trainers. Mm. Um, but most of the movie, he's sitting in his home when she's calling him on the phone. And he's watching footage. <laughs> I was really hoping that next line was going to rhyme. <laughs> he's watching like animal footage, like a, like a documentarian. And for the most part, he's watching like kill shots or things that mm. are very interest interesting moments that that were caught on film that would have taken a long time to capture just that moment yeah you you, you imagine those like planet earth you yeah. know photographers who are live there who, who are living there mm-hmm. you know 12 hours laying for a shot prone yeah trying to yeah. get some shot and the and the shot he's watching is like a jeopard being eaten by like a 
a crocodile jeopard? or something. A, a jeopard? jeopard? A jeopard. Wow. I was like thinking jaguar and leopard at the same time. A jeopard. Damn, that sounds dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> watching too much time. Dude, there might be a jeopard out there somewhere. There's, I'm yeah, just the, saying. Yeah, one of these like cat, big cat Like a liger. Yeah. Yeah. Can you prove jeopard. that the jeopard doesn't exist? <laughs> Boy, you want to see a jeopard? <laughs> but yeah, then, then he he's intrigued by this idea of getting like the ultimate shot. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Capturing that. Right. You know, moment that no one has ever caught before. He says that's impossible. Right? Yeah, and, and then he ha- he has a thing about capturing the perfect moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a nice little turn with him at the end too, where he almost does, doesn't feel deserving of it. He feels the opposite that Stephen Young does, where Stephen Young feels untouchable. Yeah, right. like almost like, well, I survived that. Yeah, like I'm fine. You know what I mean? Nothing's gonna. But it, he should have taken a table out there. That way, if it got heavy, tuck himself right. All he had to that do is not again. watch, because you know what he. Was he not watching? No, he almost doesn't make eye contact right. until the very end. He's just kind of like frozen. That's something like I didn't catch trauma. either it, it's, with it's Gordy. It's part of the way that the shot is uh. that we only see like the top part of his head. Yeah. Right. Or sorry, the bottom part of his head. But Which is a cool parallel with Jean Jacket. Yeah. You know. Until I think I think he sits down and we see Gordy like. Uh, Actually see him. Well, yeah. He Then that's when his attention it's turns. It's like when Gordy's kind of like coming out of it. Yeah. You could see like the remorse in the chimp's face, Ooh. like, oh man, like, yeah. Oh, I didn't mean to do all that. And then man. he went in for the fist yeah. bump with them yeah. too. And you know, going back a little bit to it, then we find out that at the show that Steven Yun has, that his old co star, he oh, says, yeah. like, I've had a crush on her Katie my whole life or, or something. Yeah. Um, and her face is ripped is off. Well, ripped she looks off. like all those other people that got attacked by chimps. This was making arrived. me think about the true stories. Yeah, there's yeah. um yeah. <clears throat> there is funny that that one band, Terramolos, has this great song called uh Ape it's either Ape Escape or something like that. But oh, it's that's horrible. It's literally about like that one lady that owned that chimp for years, like from a baby. Yeah. And the just, one with the 911 calls. Yes. Yeah. And, well in the movie they even make a joke about Siegfried and Roy, right? Yeah. yeah. About you know, people who do this for years, but then it turns on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, the thing that happened with the lady with the ape is, um, with the chimp is that I think she had a friend over one time. No, she was feeding this chimp Xanax or something like that. She was giving yeah, him prescription pills. I think you're right. And then he was off it one day or he didn't get his dose. And then she had a friend come over who was wearing like a very strong perfume. Yeah. And it like set him off and yeah. he ripped her face off. It's like, they're all cute and cuddly when they're little babies, but they hit sexual maturity and they go for the face and genitals when they snap. Yeah. No a chimp is so strong. It can literally rip a limb off of someone, you know, and that, is, that is such an unsettling scene when you see her just like in the stand oh, yeah. with uh, her face on her t- t-shirt. Yeah. And she's got like a veil. Uh, wearing a hat just to kind of hide what's going on a little bit. Yeah, the veil even like blows in the yeah. wind a few times. Ooh. It's crazy it's really, stuff. I mean, it's so unsettling because, you know, it's... I think it's less unsettling than the part where she's like on the floor, like in the event, and you can hear her kind of like gurgling and oh. the chimp's like still smacking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty rough. Yeah, gosh. Ooh. Oh, when the dad character comes in, I was like, Gordy, Gordy, no! No, Gordy, no, no that's a bad boy, Gordy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the CGI yeah, monkey... Funny. Uh, oh, I said monkey. I'm so sorry. The CGI great ape. I apologize. Didn't look the greatest, but it was still good. I mean, I, mean, I thought he looked okay, yeah. but um, I think uh, what's Planet his name? Of the Apes no, did. I think Pogo looks better than this <laughs> than Gordy did. How come they don't? You know, how come they just didn't get a real ape? The irony would have been hilarious. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Imagine <laughs> scary. like somebody got mauled by this ape in a, <gasps> oh, wow. in a film, scene about oh, yeah, gosh. that'd be like a crow situation. Um, <laughs> What was I going to say? Uh, so apparently what set off Gordy, I mean, it's the kind of the theme of, of all of this is you don't know how to interact. People, I mean, humans think they can control nature, but they can't control nature. Something will happen out of nowhere, like very Jurassic nature Parky. Nature nature, yeah. 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 I guess like a balloon popped on set and it set like a Gordy off. balloon. Yeah. A couple of balloons popped from like the heat of the lights or something like yes. that. And it, I think one floats up or something. I mean, yeah. How crazy is that, man? I like how we spend so much time talking about like the scene that's only a couple minutes too. It's a very <laughs> like it's, integral it's part of the sticks th- with yeah. yeah, it does. Yeah. It's really good. It's really, really and good. And the more you think about the first part of the scene, it like really carries over to like interaction with Jean Jacket and like just overall predators or like I guess apex beings or something, just being animals. Yeah. You know what I mean? Is there anything in this movie that you guys felt like didn't work for you? We've we've been singing praises. Is there anything that you know didn't quite land for you? Honestly, no. I felt like everything was good. I felt like the uh, the lighter moments all hit. They yeah. were spaced out enough. Like the humor was spaced mm-hmm. out enough and interweaved. Like 
I I really can't think of any complaints that I have here. I liked seeing Keith David. I wish there was just a little more of Keith David oh, because yeah. he rocks. Yeah, you, know what I you mean? love seeing but, him. Yeah, but but he serves. I mean, big John Carpenter guy too. True. Yeah. I mean, he guys. We got to talk about someone something related to the thing today. <laughs> oh, uh, oh yeah, there it is. Um, you know, there's one little thing, and it's really not even. I guess it's a potential plot hole. Which isn't deal breaker for me, but when you first, when the alien first shows up, a big thing about the alien is that it shuts off all electronics. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in that first scene, when it's way off in the distance, when it's like where that cloud is, you know, sitting on top of this mountain range, it's a little further out. Um, the cameras stop working or, or things around the farm, they or the lights dim. Right. You know, we, we get to see that, uh, that even from a pretty good distance. But then at the very climax of the movie, they have all the wacky, waving, inflatable, arm flailing tube men. <laughs> I was trying and so hard to not yell that in the theater because because someone was just like, "What are those things called?" It was just like wacky, inflatable, arm flailing tube men. Yeah, of course, right. <laughs> um, but then it seems like the range isn't that long because it's moving and it's like only one. Well, you know I would have I mean? to watch it again to really see. Oh, as it's going down. You yeah, just in the last part of the movie, it seems like it's not that far. Mm. Whereas, like, if from the beginning of the movie, uh, they all would have been off just from it you're being. You're talking kind about like an nearby. area of effect. Yes. What's his area the of effect? The area effect of the EMP that it releases. Yeah. Which and I guess is like a defense mechanism, really. If it you is an I mean? EMP, yeah. I mean, it's kind of hard to say based on the electronic, but typically an EMP will like fry electricity. Electronics, yeah, it's like, not coming back. They on. will not power yeah. back on. Of like, course, the interesting thing is that this is an alien, so yeah, you don't. Know we have no yeah. reference to you know what would or wouldn't happen with it, which is an interesting way to kind of it is yeah. cool. cover your bases. You know what right, I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Smart play. Oh, but Mr. it's from another world. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's not really going for realism, but I no. yeah. So again, I mean, tiny thing, but in the movie theater, I was just thinking like, huh, like what is the rule here? What are what are the rules? Really. Really liked that this thing could not digest metals, but they didn't have to tell you that. Yeah, like, yeah, again, you know what I mean. Not telling you anything. Not treating you like an idiot. Like when, it, when you see that the flag can't be digested, mm-hmm. and after he sucks up that whole group of people, then it's like, oh, that's why his dad died. gets killed by that nickel at the beginning of the movie. Um, and ultimately, this ends up being like how they defeat the alien at the end. Right. Yeah. So that little one little detail. And it also, again, just kind of like signs, whereas signs has to give you the whole flashback thing at the end. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Well, he's trying like to tell say, you about God. Swing away, Meryl. Well, swing away. Definitely the wor- the weakest part about signs yeah. is the whole God thing. And they have to put the camera right on the glass of water. <laughs> and then swing like, away swing let's away show, let's show all the glasses of water boom 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 yeah there's none yeah, of that man. in nope yeah baby there's none of that hey this is a very dumb time in movies that we were talking about <laughs> i like how you were like we don't have to keep judging this up and yet you keep like judging I, it up i can't help episode. it yeah <laughs> well, it's because there is a lot you know i mean obviously the surface level that the alien movies yeah, yeah. But there's a lot, like in the way that the themes are kind of explored, that these two movies go well together. Perfect pairing. Now, hopefully, this doesn't mean that Jordan Peele is going to become an M. Night Shyamalan. No, I hope not. I don't think. Where he puts out like five horrible movies. I feel like M. Night Shyamalan is kind of like a cautionary tale, you know, for all, like, I don't even know what you'd call them, auteur writer directors or something. It's just like, don't let that happen to you. Well, what's it called? For Shyamalan, we got Six Sense. Or no, sorry, Unbreakable, Six Sense, Signs, and then the next one was Village. That's when things and the visit. Uh, no, no. Well, number four is Village, though. Oh, like, we're talking like in progression, in release yeah. order, right? Hey, and I like the Village. There is problems, but, but with that's the where that's where yes. things start to turn. Yes, that so is the be interesting. tipping point. When we get to like uh, Jordan Peele's fourth and fifth movie, uh, is he still going to be It'll able be to a knock nice it out of the park? He's litmus kind of, test for yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's definitely kind of pulled off the uh, the impossible, which is you know you got to get past the sophomore slump. Of your second release, and then if you can hit it with your third release, and I really think this is like the peak of what he's done, mm. or at least a very interesting, uh, different direction. Yeah, very interesting, different direction. Yeah, it'll be exciting to see. I like, can't say what the same. Does next, I can't say the same about Robert Eggers yet, because um, mm. the Northman was kind of a misstep, but it was still good. It just wasn't like Robert Eggers, <laughs> not like the it's, lighthouse. It's no lighthouse. The That's lighthouse true. is incredible. But some people didn't like The Lighthouse and did like Northman. You know what I mean? So Some people haven't it's... finished watching The Lighthouse yet. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> so let's get uh, on to spoilers for Lighthouse. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping that this, uh, speaking of like 
new directors who still haven't hit the third film mark. Nude are, erectors? I see what I'm talking about with emphasis. It's all about <laughs> you, emphasis. You no, that was some weird that, pronunciation. That was all me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you nailed it. I, oh, did, that did was he me. really? Yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. You convinced um, me, Frank, by your... <laughs> Ari Aster is coming out with a new movie, Disappointment Boulevard. This is his third movie. Yeah. I really love Hereditary. I really love Midsommar. Yeah. They're both, both good. Yeah, two different sides of a coin. Very sad. The, I don't know if I've ever seen Hereditary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, deep cut. <laughs> hoping, uh... hoping he... I don't understand the premise of this new movie that he's got coming out from what I've been reading, but hey, I'm hoping it's not bad. It's going to be long and sad. You know what more can you ask for? Yeah. Joaquin Phoenix. Um, I mean, I'm trying to think if there's anything, you know, inevitably, as soon as we stop talking about Nope, I'll be like, oh man, I should have brought that up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the scene, another scene that really stuck out for me was when uh, that poor monster had like indigestion <laughs> and it's just like blood pouring Loved down oh. over the house. It just felt so crazy. It felt like and if you were in that situation, you would feel like you had lost your mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're like, how is this happening right now? With Paired with like the lightning and the storm yeah, that's going dude, on. It's just like it's such crazy. a strong scene. Man. Oh, no. And then as it progresses where the scene like uh, Jean Jacket starts moving away from the house and going towards OJ yeah. in the truck and you like the literal cl cloud of water is just like stopped over him and stuff. It's, cra it's crazy. Mm. Pretty amazing. Awesome imagery. Perfectly written in my opinion. Yeah, it'll be nice to go back and watch it again. See what else you can pick up. See if there's any complaints. Would you recommend Nope to a friend or family member? Um, I think I would recommend this movie to almost anybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is pretty scary, but it's not really um graphic. Yeah. I no. mean, there's a couple things that are a little gross, but it's not super horrifying. I mean, yeah. as long as someone's into thrillers. Yeah. Suspense. Because uh, it, it isn't, you know... It isn't slasher horror. It isn't. It it feels more like a Close Encounters or a Jaws, where yeah, yeah, yeah. it's horror, but it's also it's really more thrilling. It's it's edge of your seat movie watching, like a natural or supernatural horror or something like that. Yeah, if you listen to this whole podcast and you haven't seen it yet, you probably made a mistake. You probably should have went to go watch <laughs> it. Yeah, you f***ed up. You should or, still go watch it. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say, yeah. or all of our details thus far have been titillating to you, and you like have to watch it because I yeah. would. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go see this movie a second time, definitely. This and you know what? Like David would recommend it to anyone. I would recommend it to anyone. Jordan Peele would recommend it to anyone. His intention going into this was like knowing there are people who are not down to go see something f***ed up happen. Hmm. So hmm. like his whole intention in writing this was like a welcoming into the horror genre specifically for those people. Like, hey, look, like we could have fun. Like it's, yeah. it's fine. Like you cannot yeah. be traumatized and like come see this movie. Although this will mm. cause me some trauma from looking at the skies now. <laughs> um, it's like, great. I was always, I was already afraid of the ocean of clouds. Yeah. <laughs> and I was safe here in the desert, but we got a lot of sky boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also would recommend this to anyone uh, young and old. I think that anyone can go into this movie understanding even on the surface level, what it is, and still have a good time watching this movie. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, I like that this movie, I think that this movie will have great rewatch value. I'm obviously going to go see it again, but I also think later down the line, it's going to have even better rewatch value because unlike some of um, his other movies like Get Out or Us, which have like, they do have some like political undertones in ways that will probably tie to like the time period that they are mm. later down the road. I don't think so. <laughs> this yeah, is people, less so. People still going to be racist. <laughs> yes, people will always be racist. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that this is definitely something that doesn't rely on being in the present. You yeah. Know what I mean, yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. topical in any way. Yeah. So it's gonna it's gonna carry on. This is a great movie. I had a. This is one of the top five movie viewing experiences I've had this year thus far. <laughs> wow. Again, let me click on that. High video. highs, low lows, very it's low been lows. Very interesting year. <laughs> It's been a weird been a year, very man. Interesting it's been a year. weird year. Man, yeah, this uh, this uh, C CLE Awards is going to be crazy. <laughs> yeah, we don't forget to do it this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, um, so it feels like we're wrapping it up. I'm just real now realizing that... Excuse me. Uh, Gerd, what are you going to do? Got to get that uh, cheddar. Yeah, just now realizing you forgot about the numbers. Nope, with its 130-minute runtime, which I feel like... Speaking about lactose intolerance, give us that cheddar. Doesn't feel... <laughs> long you know what i no. mean two hours the, the pacing is, it two is hours? great it's two hours and ten minutes wow hmm. yeah doesn't feel like it at all. it doesn't feel like two hours and ten minutes it feels like a tight 90 mm -hmm. um I but think, i think it feels like 
two hours. Yeah. Really? But I'm not, I, I'm enthralled. You know what I mean? Like I caught the like 1040 showing like after oh, yeah. work. I was worried it was going to like drag and I was like, I, I could watch that again right now. Let's yeah, go. that was really Round cool. Two. Uh, it's, it's currently has a 7.6 out of 10 on IMDb with an 83% uh, Rotten Tomato score. Also criminal. Um, estimated budget of $68 million and its opening weekend and worldwide gross, because this is the end of the opening weekend, is $44,366,910. Almost so, made it back completely. On the way of making the nut. On the way. That's a surprisingly low bu- budget. Like, I would think and that... he, like, built that, like, house and that ranch oh, and that town out there. Cool, like, that's man. all set. They, like, went out there and built that definitely goes to speak to like how great a contained movie can be there are three locations maybe in this entire movie the ranch yeah, the, the yeah. ranch the town the town fries <laughs> well and the the film set the film set oh yeah. right right yeah hollywood copper pots uh, cove copper pots cove yeah, yeah there you go yeah <laughs> yeah uh antler's house yeah, kind of just a couple of little ones, yeah. little, little offshoots, little. but the main <laughs> sets. TV are three. studio, sorry, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we would keep another one. <laughs> Under studio. the table at the TV <laughs> studio, <laughs> that scene will live on in my head, rent free for the rest of my life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, go see it. Go see Nope. And thanks for sticking around. We're not finished yet, but if you haven't yet, please hit like, share, and subscribe. Wow. Hit us with a five-star review. It helps us get discovered on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Be sure on Instagram to follow us at Uninformed Movie Reviews. David has something very exciting in the works, and it'll be coming big out things, real big soon. Things. Big things coming soon. <laughs> wow. Stay tuned, folks. Let's move on to... Oh, that's interesting. Uh, the current events, um, usually movie news uh, topics. Yeah. Uh, today, I've got some movie news for y'all. Is it about oh, okay. Ezra Miller? Because I will walk out. It, it is not. Is. David, uh, David, is our, David is our resident Ezra Miller correspondent. <laughs> I haven't heard anything, you know, happening. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, oh, actually, I, breaking sorry, news. Hey, this just in. This just in. Uh, so, channel sweetheart, Brendan Fraser. Oh, I thought you were going to say. Uh, he has a new film coming up with an also i wouldn't say sweetheart but a well-liked director uh, on oh, the channel. oh darren say- aronofsky's yeah. new film the Ba-na. whale Ba-na-na-na. sorry yes sir <laughs> the mummy star brendan fraser is well weird <laughs> connect star. weird connect you mean george of the jungle weird way to say it. today's episode because there's the scorpion king reference you know what oh, i mean yeah. like there's the whole scorpion oh, thing that was awesome and, and nope. Um, awesome? I just realized I mean, that right now. Yeah. I, I awesome hate that movie, feels but, strong. A, but a yeah. great, great reference you know, to even a, a bad movie. Thing, I uh, finished modding my GameCube like you guys know this. Oh, the Scorpion King. Uh, I put the Scorpion King ROM on there because my mom had bought it for me. How bad does it look? I was telling you guys about this. No, it's a horrible game. I haven't I haven't played it again. I played it back then, but I just remember that it starts off with uh, the menu music is ah stand alone. Oh, oh my god. god. Uh, yeah, is it stained? Who is it? No. I don't that's know. That's Godsmack, I'm pretty it sure. Is it is Godsmack. Godsmack. Yes. There's a couple Godsmack tunes yeah. in the game. So perfect uh, band for a perfect game. <laughs> live stream coming soon. <laughs> What? Oh, that's cringy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Mummy Star Brendan Fraser is unrecognizable as the 600 pound recluse whoa, whoa, whoa. in the Prowned. first images. Yeah, pound. It's like a pound, but fatter. <laughs> but pr- why? Yeah. He's gonna be. I thought this movie was supposed to be about Moby Dick or something like that. No, I think he's the whale. Yeah, oh, he is crap. the whale. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, so let's see. Fraser. Fr- uh, no, I don't need to read that part. Fraser Brendan. Fraser Brendan. <laughs> Fraser's role in The Whale is indeed perhaps the most challenging he's ever tackled. The film sees the star playing Charlie, a middle aged man who has become a 600 pound recluse after years of binge eating to deal with the guilt of leaving his family for his gay lover. Uh, Stranger Things, Sadie Saint co stars as Ellie, the daughter Charlie wants to reconnect with after abandoning her for years. Cast also includes Hong Chow, Samantha Morton, and Ty Simpkins. I'm not very good with celebrity names. Simpkins, None of those brought really familiar. I, I don't know those names. I mean, Sadie Sink is, you know, running up that hill as always. Mm-hmm. Is that Max? Yeah, it is Oh, uh, okay, okay. Um, uh, Ty Simpkins sounds very familiar. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've seen them in something. Uh, I didn't know that's what this movie's about, but it yeah. does sound like it's got some uh, The Wrestler vibes. It, I'll pass it, this around so you could see uh, The oh, Whale. Wow. I, I saw it you already, saw? actually. You know, He's it, not unrecognizable. It looks that's like clearly Brendan. <laughs> yeah. He looks 
a little bit more puffy face <laughs> than he already did. He yeah. doesn't look as it's like, like uh, Colin Farrell in the Batman. Right? Yeah, like, oh, no, they no. were yeah, very totally. nice to Brendan Fraser in this article. Yeah. <laughs> yes, this is Aronofsky. So that's funny that you had a a whale like Moby Dick in your head because I was thinking like Jonah and the whale. Yeah, something like that. He's hit the religious theme recently with Noah. Yeah, Noah and uh, Mother. Oh yeah. Um, Girl, but love that movie. Yeah, the uh, this is his first pairing with A24 also, which I think is interesting. Ooh. Yeah, it'll be exciting. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. Very uh, exciting. Film supposed to premiere at the Venice Film Festival, and I guess we'll see it a couple months after that. When's that? Because that's how it goes, you know? I don't know. I wasn't invited this year. So we, oh, but it doesn't say what month that'll be in or no. anything? Or year? Is no, this no. finally time to hit the Aaron Austin I was just going to say that'll be Damn, right in time. Might. Oh, I don't think I'll be here, but you guys could do it without me. <gasps> like we're going to do that one without well, you. Wait till you get on. back. Yeah. You'll come out with another one. <laughs> I'll just write it in. I'll, I'll, leave, I'll leave you guys like 30 second audio clips. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it'll be like, and, my number eight is... <laughs> and we'll mi- just mix them around, cut them up so that it lines up perfect with ours because yours yeah. are wrong. Yeah, I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> we shall What's see. What's the best Aronofsky movie? Just right off the top of your head right now. Top of my head? I think Mother is the best one for me. Or Requiem oh, for a Dream. Interesting. Requiem for a Dream is pretty good. I mean, good. Requiem for a Dream really hits you in a certain way that you can't yeah, ever I mean, forget. so does Mother. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah both <laughs> are um, pretty intense. And I'm pretty sure I've only seen both films only once oh interesting the wrestler is also pretty dope gonna that's, be pretty that's high. the only one i haven't seen now. you haven't seen the rest i've seen the rest of it's me. the only one i've seen multiple times i love that oh, movie i've seen black swan a lot oh black, black swan, swan is also awesome. i still haven't seen black swan and then i've seen pie a couple times that one's i that's probably it's last. definitely my last i'd say uh the fountain the, the fountain's a i like the fountain i just saw it recently actually i think black swan's like, better than the fountain i think the wrestler is better than the fountain for sure uh, Noah's kind of mid. Uh, I kind of like Noah. I don't know what it is. Noah, there's something. You know what it is that I like. You, my my endearment towards Noah is that it like pissed off the Christians yes. a little bit. I like that. Like, oh, that is. Fun. Oh, that's not my Bible. Like, yeah, yeah suck it, it. Made, it gave it like a little Middle Earth vibe, <laughs> yeah, and I was yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. you know what? That's kind of cool. <laughs> it, is a, it is like Tolkien meets Bible. Yeah, it, it is kind of an interesting take for sure. I dig it. It also kind of reminds me of like Clash of the Titans a little bit. Yeah, in a weird way. I could see that. Um. We're missing one more. Oh, you said mother already. Mother's good. Mother is good. Mother's great. It's weird. I think it could be off. Mother to a lot feels of people. like a fever dream. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's it one of those does. dreams. It is literally a dream I've had where too many people are in my house. I don't know why they're there and they will not leave. That sounds like a nightmare for you. Yeah. yeah I can see does. that being your nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> and then a baby comes in and something happens. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. I'll never forget that moment. Like, every time I think of it, I still feel exactly the the way I did in that moment. Like, oh my God, I wasn't prepared for that. (laughs) Man, what a fun movie. Um, (laughs) But, uh, yeah, Frank, that was interesting. It was very interesting. I thought it was interesting. I was straight up excited when I came across it. You know what? And the quality of that picture leads me to think... Maybe like a month we'll get a trailer or something. Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's edited and, and it's already. Yeah, it seems like it's already like getting pretty edited. Got colored and stuff. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, you know what I was thinking is the next time we do happen to have an Ezra Miller uh, piece on here, we need to call it a newsflash. Obviously. Uh, just a different like Ezra Miller. Like we'll interrupt in the middle of the oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Newsflash. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I just got oh, the joke. It just, just now. It yeah. Just, yeah. Just now. Yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was great, Frank. That's going to lead us over to our final segment of the episode, which is everyone's favorite real hypothetical real segment. Perfect. Peeps yes. And perfect. Predicts. Love it. Never, <laughs> never change. Oh, never yeah. change. Peeps and predicts. The segment where we take two people, i.e. peeps, whether they be real or fictional. Or tiny little marshmallow ducks. Or, and put them in situations or predicaments. And uh, we see who comes out on top. Who is our reigning champ? Neo, the one. Keanu. Still. Mr. Anderson. (laughs) Never gets old. Mr. Anderson. All right. So I had the peeps jar. Uh, Neo as our champ, much like a long leather duster, never goes out of style. Never, dude. (laughs) That's arguable. (laughs) Duster's badass. Yeah, you could either have it on in the Matrix or at any Yu-Gi-Oh tournament. (laughs) 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 Right at at home. (laughs) What is this? (laughs) Oh, oh. (laughs) Okay, the two peeps are, I I think I wrote it and I still didn't even get my own joke. 
Uh, that's amazing. Oh, wow, I'm excited. Okay, <laughs> yeah, it is. And uh, from Jurassic World Dominion, T Rex Machina versus Blue the Velociraptor. <laughs> T Rex <laughs> Machina. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's that's some of your better work for T S Rex Machina. Yeah. <laughs> that's versus, the joke you should have made. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. This is um, why we're a team. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Plus Blue the Raptor. Yeah. Love it. Okay, and their their scenario is. Who's more likely to struggle in releasing themselves from a Chinese finger Dude, trap? Dude, straight up, <laughs> as soon as he read that, I was like, I hope it's the finger trap yeah. one. <laughs> All right, to be fair, they both probably have the same size claw appendage finger. Because yeah, even the, though T-Rex is big, he's probably got like almost the same size. I'm, I'm going to say that um, who's better at it? No, more likely to struggle. I think yeah, T-Rex is dumber. It. And it's going to be harder to, to see. Yeah, and Blue's also super smart. Yeah, true. Great mom, too. Great mom. Yeah, 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 Great yeah, yeah. mom. Mother's What's Day What's the space would be there to like do something with his fingers and the <laughs> yeah. and Blue would be like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, relax, push in. He would, he would hold you. out his hand and then he'd hold out his other hand <laughs> and then he'd slowly push the fingers yeah. together and then slowly release them. I and then Blue really would release money. himself, give him like a, thanks, bro, and then yeah. head off. And, <laughs> and then hop on his motorcycle. <laughs> I'll be back in the snowy one. <laughs> God, these movies are so bad. Uh, well, that was easy. Okay. Uh, Simple. Next. Yeah, set. that logic, very sound to me. We're moves, becoming so agreeable. Moves on to face. Oh, wait, no, it's two out of three. Hey, he, he, he corrected it. himself. <laughs> Our next predicament is who's more likely to struggle with understanding how a chip card reader works? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I think almost for the same exact reason. Man. It's an intelligence issue. It really. is an intelligence yeah. issue. <laughs> and it's Plus, a- Blue is going to be closer to the reader. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's going to be far closer to the reader. Arguably, he that could T-Rex like put is- it in his mouth or something. And that like, T-Rex's yeah. head is so over his arms. Yeah. Yep. All right, well. And that one's struggle also, right? What's that? The- that yeah, one- yeah, that is struggle. So, the- would be so worse. T-Rex is the winner. Oh. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah, who's more likely to struggle? David, you caught it in real Wait, time. Wait, so did. then T Rex is T Rex Machina. T Rex actually... wins both. Oh wow, T T S Rex Machina. This is going to be a very interesting final yes. battle. Too smart for its own good. Is. Um, okay, so advances to Neo, Mister Anderson versus Blue, the Velociraptor, the Mama thing. It's funny how fast we're blowing through this, but I don't feel like we could have argued those no. positions no. any. You know why? Because they're it's very shallow writing. <laughs> All of it. Yeah, yeah. The situation being, who's more likely to be an anime fan? Well, I know that Keanu Reeves is actually. But is not actually is the, fun well, fact: all dinosaurs were heavily into like '80s and '90s animation. Mm, yeah, I don't know if you guys knew that. I did. But that's not just know hard that. science. Oh, so he's just into the classics like me. He's yeah, not watching yeah. anything current. Doesn't mm-hmm. consider himself an anime fan. Yeah, though. that's just why. That's why I call fan. you D Rex all the time. Oh, oh. Yeah. well, you know what? No one's ever called me D Rex before. I kind of like a good it. one. I yeah. kind of like it. That's the second original nickname I've given you in the time of our friendship. I'll see wow. if I can hit another one. D two. What was in D2? It's like a, no, it it's a, like Howl Now Brown. I don't know if he wants it on air. <laughs> Howl yeah. Now Brown. Howl Now Brown. Owl. Dude, Shout out. I Tyler was straight Cowell. up telling people at work about that. I was like still laughing about <laughs> it on Monday. so man. good. Oh, it was good stuff. Wow. <laughs> like, I thought Baby Eric was funny, but Howl Now Old Brown Cow is, is really good. <laughs> it's really good, right? Uh, I feel like this has to be Neo, Neo also because he's like a computer hacker in the 90s. Yeah. He, in, in the first movie, he's like torrenting. He's all those stacks. He's got the classic hacker setup you could see that guy throwing on some akira uh you know it's funny is i actually saw an interview today that keanu reeves just did at comic-con saying that when the wachowskis were prepping him for the matrix they held up a series of movies and they're like you need to watch this 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 it's like akira ghost in the shell um uh, i forgot the other one too the house bunny <laughs> the house bunny <laughs> yeah so yes i know that he's seen classic anime Interesting, or at least that the Matrix is obviously influenced by oh, classic. And anime. we also got that sweet Akira bike slide in Nope, so it all comes full circle. Yep. Oh yeah, that was that yeah. was the reference I was saying. They, they yep. hit they hit the shot for shot Akira yep. reference. Yeah, you guys were talking about like oh the Akira bike slide, and I was like, is that where that's from? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cl- classic. You ready? Hit that copyright flag. What? Let's go. <laughs> uh, something about Malcolm X. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Neo reigns supreme Neo again. Wins again. Yeah. He even beat out a T Rex. Didn't he just beat another like creature? Yeah, I'm pretty or like sure. he it, he wasn't facing a creature, but it was like who would beat this creature? Oh, it Did was he just um, kill something. Yeah, it was uh, Harry from Harry and the Hendersons. Uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Strange. CLE. Speaking of which, coming up soon in the channel, next CLE, Harry and the Hendersons. That'll be a solo one. Although, to be honest, we don't have the next CLE planned. It comes out next week. Yeah. So we're probably going to plan this in the next like five minutes right <laughs> after this is done. After that, though. After that, we have Movie Quest American Football. Yes. Which I think we can, as Americans, can we just change? call it football? We're just going to call this football movies. Yeah. I feel yeah. like we have a lot of European fans, guys. But I mean, it, they know we're American, though, and thusly we're they should know we're clearly American. Yeah, overwhelmingly American. Come on, ride the train and ride, ride it. it. Boop, boop. Let's uh, do it. Then after that, August twenty first, we have a CLE on Prey. That'd be cool. The Hulu original. Oh, I thought we were doing E Prey Love. <laughs> well, we could change it. <laughs> then at the end of the month, we're doing Last House on the Left remake versus original. Mm, let's go. That'll be interesting. Yep. That should be a Very fun good. one. Spe speaking of seeing something f***ed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, something that uh, in both versions is not great. Want to do it twice. Um, yeah, I mean, that's going to leave us with uh, me thanking you for liking, sharing, and subscribing to Uninformed Movie yeah. Reviews on YouTube if you're listening on Spotify. Three plugs. Three plugs. He's Apple Podcasts. It. We appreciate you. Everyone around the world, thanks for listening. Uh, go see Nope. It is hella 